Okay, so in the previous uh, video clip, I set out uh, estimation of the VIX index, how we might go about doing that, and I uh, followed a paper uh, spreadsheet set up in a particular paper by Arnold and uh, Earl, um, and I just took a series of numbers that they had. Now, this is not a uh, uh, this is very practical. Um, terms of understanding how the VIX is estimated, but just to put in context how I might uh, set this out in a quiz or how I might set this out in an exam question, uh, I've set up this uh, example uh, and so we would have to break down a bit the estimation here. Uh, so one way of uh, presenting uh, a VIX type question in terms of a quiz or exam question would be, well, first of all, set out uh, the varying formula that we have. So there's three uh, uh, integral to making the estimation. We have three formulae that we rely upon in particular. Um, we might look at, and of course, we have the data uh, in order to feed the estimation. So we might have a look here just at uh, the narrative here calculate the VIX using uh, the two maturity series. So we do need we do need two maturities. There is, in this instance, like the uh, estimation done before in the spreadsheet set out by Arnold, Arnold and Earl. Uh, we have a 16-day period and a 44 a 44-day period, uh, and then we have the relevant data. So we've call price data. Uh, with these varying strikes, so th these are literally call market values that we would have observed, and then put values, so put market prices as well for each of the corresponding uh, exercise prices, and then in addition we have uh, a parallel set of data for same exercises corresponding to before, um, but uh, call and put uh, prices. Okay. So we've got to integrate this into our estimation. It is, after all, a VIX estimation. And in the process of setting out the VIX, uh, we've got to identify a few things. First of all, uh, we've got to identify here, like in the original uh, Earl and, uh, Arnold and Earl paper, we had to identify uh, the relevant exercise in F, so uh, part of the estimation in terms of running the individual uh, variance estimations, we had to estimate F and K0. And K0 here can be obtained by just looking at at what point uh, when we compare the respective calls and puts, at what point is the option value uh, is the difference between the call and the put minimized and it's fairly clear here at the 900 you know we have 840 1840 $18 uh, the difference here is minimized and then that allows us to identify the out of the money if you like out of the money puts and out of the money calls okay so we'll see that in a moment so the relevant data in terms of our estimation uh, the 130, the 360, the 870, and then the 1810, the 270, and the 0 0.6. Now, in the uh, original, or in the um, the Arnold and uh, Earl uh, example, we had uh, four additional observations in terms of uh, values. Uh, here what I've done, I've reduced by four in each instance. So for the near term and for the far term uh, options, we have this is the table. We're losing four data points on each series and we're working with a reduced uh, set of option prices. But again, uh, in terms of our estimation, uh, we would say how do we estimate or how do we find we want, we want to estimate uh, F and the strike. This, this is the K0, this is F. 
we have to identify the out of the money option. So the the put values, in other words, we look for we identify uh, first of all k zero. If we want to go back to our formula one more time, we have to identify the in terms of using this formula here, we've got to get f and we've got to get uh, k0. To get at k0, we've got to identify at what level of uh, option uh, pricing, option prices, is the difference between the call and the put minimized. And it's fairly clear uh, when we're uh, away from the 900 here the values diverge as we get closer to the 900 the values converge and are fairly close so we can say we can ident identify uh, in this instance that the, the relevant k0 for this formula is 900 and the uh, for the far term or the next term set of options the relevant uh, value here uh, for k0 is also 900 because that's when the differences between the call values and put values is minimized. So uh, 3140 minus the 3020, uh, 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 the value, the difference between those two values is 120. It's much greater here. It's greater here. The difference is greater here, greater here, minimized here. So k0 900. Likewise, we're here. The difference is forty cent, much bigger otherwise outside. So the relevant K zero here is nine hundred. Okay. So if we were to set up and set that up in a spreadsheet, you can see then from that we can say, okay, to run our estimation, to run, going back into a word document to, if we want to estimate this let's just copy and go back in okay and I'll paste here home paste if we're estimating this uh, expression here we've got to identify k0 in each instance it's 900 and 900 for the short term and longer term uh, chain data okay so a better overall view then I might just split the screen so I'll come down here and go to view and hit split and we can get a little bit uh, perspective here I can just make some adjustment as we need to identify particular parts of the screen but we we want to estimate if you like I'll just bring that here we obviously want to estimate our Sigma squared with and to run that estimation, we need to get the sum of this QKI. Now, what's the this QKI? Uh, well, it's it's just equal to the value of the out of the money option. So it's the 130 and the 360. And we have to multiply. So this value here, 130, 360, corresponds to the highlighted range here. The 1820 that we have here is the average of 1840 and 18. The 181 is the out of the money call option. The 270, again, the out of the money call option. And the 60, again, is the out of the money call option. And to run this estimation here, we multiply by ERT. So E represents just, uh, if we, we come up to its RT, the interest rate is 1.16% and T1 here, T1 is the time period engendered by the 16 days. Now just to note as well, the 16 days, when we say 16 days, it actually turns out to be 15. And the way we might understand that is 15 divided by 365 is equal to that 0 0.041095 etc etc so I am conscious that when we read the question and we're told that it's a 16 16 day period 16 the near term is 16 days and the short term or the longer dated options are 44 days uh, that turns out to be equivalent to not 16 but 15 and we assume that there's 365 days in the year and again it's important to note that when we when we run this, the, the settlement date 
is in, we would say, 44 days' time or 16 days' time, uh, the current time period is 8.30, right? So, you know, and then the settlement is at 8.30 in the morning as well. So if we were to consider, for instance, uh, again, this is not relevant here, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's five days. But if we say start at 8.30 here in the morning, right, and to 8.30 uh, the following day, that's one day, 8.30 the following day, that's two, two days, 8.30 Thursday, that's three days, 8.30 to Friday, that's four days. So if we start off at 8.30 in the morning and we go to Friday morning, we don't actually have a full five days. We actually have, we have four days. So we lose a day in translation. So we have five days between Monday and Tuesday one day, Tuesday and Wednesday one day, Wednesday and Thursday one day, Thursday and Friday one day, that's four days. Okay, so that's how we get that uh, 15 days. So 15 divided by 365 gives us the maturity. Likewise, we originally said the longer term contract was for 44 days, but we only use actually 43 for the same re reason. It's currently 8.30 in the morning. Settlement is at 8.30 in the morning on the day of expiry. If we divide not 44 but 43 by 365 we get the relevant maturity so the maturity that we're using here is 11 uh, 7 8 uh, 0 8 2 2 likewise here okay so that's just when we're running our estimate here let's come back and highlight again a little bit the estimation the process in terms of our estimation in terms of running the estimation here, we uh, take the we were following uh, our formula here two divided by t two divided by t. Where are we getting t? It's for the short maturity. This is the short maturity, fifteen days, not sixteen divided by three six five. Then we're taking the sum of these guys. I'll explain these in one second. Okay, so the sum of, but we did multiply uh, by uh, this. So it's the sum of this range of values here. And then 1 uh, minus 1 over Tf k0 minus 1 to be squared. Just come up here for a second to explain this. Okay, so keep in mind we get the 130 because it's the out of the money option. Okay, keep in mind what we're uh, working out here. We're taking uh, the change in the value. So the E13, E13 is the 25. It's the change going between 825 and 850. It's a uniform $25 increase in the strike price. We have that 25. So it's 25 divided by the relevant exercise squared. Exercise, exercise squared. E uh, positive, it's a RT, so the interest rate is 1% or 1.16, and the time period is 0 0.041, that's 15 divided by 365, and then we multiply that, we multiply that in turn by the 130, and the, the 130 F13, where's that coming from? That's the out of the money, it's this value here. Okay, so, it, so it's the out of the money put options. This value here, again, the 360 is the out of the money put, out of the money put. The, where we've identified K0, uh, 1840 uh, plus 18 divided by 2 is 1820. So that's the QKI. Then we switch to the call option, out of the money call. Again, out of the money call, out of the money call. Okay, so when we come down here and run the estimation that we have, we're summing these values, we're taking the sum of these values, right, which are captured here, and we're multiplying by 2 divided by dt. dt is the relevant time period, in this case, the 15 divided by 365. And then finally, 
uh, we're using 1 over tf k0 minus 1 squared for here.